the Honda Civic gets a refresh for the 2025 model year, as well as getting this new hybrid version that we have here. And in this video, I'm gonna cover the exterior, the interior, take it for a drive, see what it's like out on the road, as well as talking about the kind of fuel economy you can expect, which is very impressive, as well as the pricing and how it compares to the competition. So as far as the styling changes for the 2025 Civic, so some of the changes are just for 2025 in general, other changes are specific to the hybrid. So as far as the general 2025 tweaks, you have a new front bumper on all of them here that's inspired by the high performance type R version. You also have a unique grille here that's been tweaked uh, and gives you a little bit of a different look here for 2025 on all Civics. Now, as far as the hybrid version, the unique touches here you get for those are that the little area around the headlights that leads into the grille there, those are painted body colored here on the hybrids. Uh, it's just gonna be regular black on non-hybrids. You also have the little body colored lip there on the lower part of the front bumper. That is again, a hybrid exclusive thing. You won't get that on regular versions of the Civic either, but uh, you know, a nice freshening up of the front there. And I think it didn't really need much to change anyway, because it just already looked really good. But coming down to the sides here, you do have some unique 18 inch wheels here that are exclusive to this top sport touring hybrid version of the Civic. But uh, these ones look great. You also have this this new urban gray pearl color. It's one of the new colors you get. There's also a new sand kind of color you get on the hatchback, exclusive to the hatchback as well. And by the way, speaking of the hatchback, this hybrid is also available in that hatchback form, which is a key differentiator compared to its main competitor, the Toyota Corolla hybrid. And then going out to the back there, you now have darker taillights, they say. It's ever so slight though. I mean, it's hard to even tell the difference between the pre-refresh and this one. But other than that, it's basically the same out back there. Of course, you have a hybrid badge there to denote that but otherwise, you know, it looks the same out back, but again, don't think it needed any changes. And I think it's, you know, a really nice look here uh, for the sedan and for that hatchback. And so overall, just a really nice little refresh here on the outside of the Civic. The interior of the 2025 Civic is mostly the same as the pre-refresh version with a few minor little tweaks. So the first thing is that all 2025 Civics get USB-C ports now instead of the USB-A. And it's also worth noting that the hybrids don't have any compromise as far as cargo space. The battery for the hybrid system is just under the back seat there so no changes for both the sedan or the hatch all the same cargo space all the same practicality as before so that's also great now as far as this top sport touring hybrid version um, this is the only one that gets this new nine inch screen uh, one inch larger than the other versions of the Civic and this is the only one that still unfortunately has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto I'm not sure why basically everybody else these days has gone to wireless CarPlay and basically everything is standard and the fact that you still got to go up to a top Civic in order to get that wireless connectivity is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I mean, plugging in your phone is certainly a first world problem, but it's just nice to be able to hop in and have that connected without having to fumble with a cord. Um, now with this top screen though, you do also get Google built in. Um, so if you're in the Google ecosystem, you like having Google Maps built straight into the infotainment system and Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, it has all those things built right into the screen without needing your smartphone integration. If you're someone who doesn't like having that tethered for whatever reason, you have that built in here. Now the compromise of that, and this is the same thing I did with the Accord, and I don't know why, but whenever you go to this Google built-in screen, you lose satellite radio. There's no way to get it at all. Um, so you're stuck with either that smartphone mirroring or AM or FM radio, that's it. Um, there's also USB you can still do, I suppose, as well, but it's just kind of strange. I don't know why they thought that getting rid of satellite radio was okay, and I'm sure they heard backlash on that on Accord. Why they continued that here for Civic, I don't know. But just be warned, if you're getting a top Civic, you don't get satellite radio anymore. So really strange as far as that goes. But everything else in the Civic interior is very nice. I still adore this interior design. I love the metal air vents here and this grill that goes across the whole dash. And just the way Honda does, like the feel of the buttons is better than all the competitors. Everything you touch, I mean, all the metal around like the climate control knobs and everything, just so many nice things. And the seats are super comfortable and uh, just so many great things. And it is worth noting too, you know, these seats are leather only in the Sport Touring. If you're someone who doesn't need leather seats, you know, you can go down to the regular Sport Touring. You still get heated seats in that uh, Sport hybrid version of the Civic. And so it's great that you still have a lot of features. They still give you the sunroof. You just miss out on the Bose stereo and the one inch larger screen. But if you're someone who, you know, still wants satellite radio, you know, that a lower Sport hybrid might be the better way to go since that hybrid step up is giving you a little bit more equipment than a regular Civic 
sport gets. And so anyway, but otherwise the interior is fantastic in every other way. Now I won't go through the whole interior because my wife and I did a full in-depth interior review dedicated to the Civic whenever this new generation came out. And so everything else will be the same, but I mean, backseat space is great. The trunk space is great. All that hasn't changed. And overall, still just a really nice interior. But let's start up and go for a drive. The Civic still has Honda's wonderfully small key. I love this key. If you're someone who keeps your key in your pocket, this key is probably the best in the industry because of how small it is. Probably the smallest in the industry as well. And just goes to show you don't need some giant fob. Um, and anyway, it's great. Does all the basics you need it to do anyway. And uh, so anyway, you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the power button here, and it turns right on. And since this is a hybrid, oftentimes if you have a charge in the battery like you usually will have, it won't even turn on the gas engine. This one, the gas engine is turning on because I've been uh, filming this interior and draining that battery a little bit. But otherwise, it'll start off completely silently. All right, so setting off here in the 2025 Civic Hybrid. So the first things you notice about this vehicle, well, the first thing I think I notice at least with these hybrid systems from Honda is that because they have an e-motor that's primarily driving the wheels at all times, um, it's actually feeling a lot more like an electric vehicle compared to other hybrids out there that just, you know, have a kind of eCVT kind of thing uh, powering the wheels. This, it feels really smooth. You don't feel any kind of shifting or transfer of power or anything. It's just nice and smooth. And the way Honda does driver inputs, I still have to say they are the best as far as driver inputs, especially in these classes of vehicle like the compact sedan class. I mean, it's just like really sharp throttle response, but not overboard. It's easy to be smooth with. Brakes feel great even on this hybrid here. They've blended it perfectly, so there's no weirdness in the brake pedal. Steering is really a nice feeling, uh, you know, like resistance and weight to it. A little more weighty than like a Toyota Corolla hybrid, which is really light. And I mean, that's gonna be a personal preference thing. Not everyone likes weightier steering, but it's not overboard like you get with a Mazda or something sometimes. This just kind of a Goldilocks kind of feel and everything about this just to me is very gratifying to use. Driving this vehicle just feels good even whenever you're just hypermiling it or you're going slowly. Just every turn of the wheel, every time you use the brakes, every time you use the gas, it just does exactly what you want it to do. It feels good when you do it and it's just a really nicely set up thing. I've always admired this, the, this current gen Civic for that. They just nailed it from the get-go and so none of that changes for 25 and I'm happy that you know none of that changes due to the hybrid thing. Other things here, so with the hybrids, you also get active noise control. So it's gonna be a little quieter in here than a non-hybrid Civic. Um, they have some extra sound deadening and stuff as well. But um, you also have a more rigid chassis for all 2025 Civics. It's just a little more rigid, so that'll give you a slightly smoother ride than before, while also giving you great handling, even better handling than before, even if it's just ever so slightly. You know, we're not talking massive jumps in rigidity, but little improvements there are certainly nice. Also, visibility is still the same great visibility you have here in these uh, Civics of this generation where you have a nice big windshield, nice thin A-pillars, really thin A-pillars um, for something these days. I mean, it's really impressive. Mirrors off onto the doors, nice and easy to see around here in this vehicle. You also hear on the hybrids uh, for the Sport Touring version here also get park sensors. Um, so a little bit of extra help there whenever you're in tight spots. But even with the gas engine on, you know, climbing a hill here, you know, you hear it, but it's not like this dominating loud overboard kind of sensation and just you know it's a really nice thing to cruise around in at low speeds here even the econ mode um it doesn't really dull throttle response and it's still even nice to drive in that mode but i put it up into the sport mode here which is does give you heavier steering as well as uh, sharpening everything up a little bit let's turn down onto this back road and see how it does here we go instant little punch from the electric motor and it sounds good with that two liter natural gas fed motor just doing its thing. And it's pretty punchy, it gets up to speed really, really nicely. It's a nice improvement over a regular Civic, and it's even an improvement over the Civic SI. So we have a two liter naturally aspirated Atkinson cycle engine that uh, is combined with two electric motors. One is just like a generator, and the other one is a traction motor that provides that propulsion. And all together in this application, it does 200 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque. Now, any Honda experts will know that's four horsepower less than this same setup in the Accord and in the CRV. You're also down uh, over 10 pound-feet of torque compared to those. Um, and part of that is due to, I think they said there's slightly different packaging for the space constraints of the Civic uh, engine bay compared to the larger Accord and CRV. But, you know, for a little vehicle like this, it's still plenty of punch, and that's still 40 more pound-feet of torque than even the SI version. 
the performance one and this even matches that on horsepower and it's also just a really cool option that you can get this with the hybrid which previously you weren't able to get a punchier hybrid version unless you want to go up to uh, the Acura Integra and then now with this you know you're able to have a punchy Civic hatch and it's really great that they are you know just finally answering the call for that punchier hatchback version of the Civic. And because of that extra power, you do have a faster acceleration than even the Civic Si. Car and driver got a 6.2 seconds there to 60, and they, they, I think they actually tested an Si at 6.6 .6 seconds, and a regular Civic's gonna be uh, much slower than that. So, I mean, really uh, a good amount of punch. This is actually even slightly faster than the Accord and the CRV, um, even though it has you know, a little bit less power there. But, I mean, it's a really punchy setup, but it doesn't make itself feel super punchy. It doesn't feel like it's some super fast version of the Civic or anything. It still is very chill and mellow when you want it to be. And then here in sport mode, you know, it just gives you that punch really nice and immediately. But we're coming up some corners here that I always take. And let's see how the Civic Hybrid handles. So we have 235 wide Continental tires, but they're just like hyper -miling kind of tires. Nothing sporty. That is one big difference compared to the SI where you can get some sportier tires on those. Um, but it handles itself really nicely. Now you do have a little bit more weight, and I do feel like I may be feeling that extra weight a tiny bit. They say that that's offset though by a lower center of gravity ever so slightly, but curb weight does go up by like 288 pounds compared to um, a regular uh, Civic SI. But man, even coming out of that corner, just to show you the amount of torque you have, it was going to smoke that inside front wheel, and I, I almost feel like you know, there could be a, a benefit to having an actual LSD, which you don't have here in this compared to what you get in the Civic SI with that limited slip diff. SI, if you are someone who's into power, that might be a little bit better in the snow as a result. Because this, even in the dry, has been one thing to spin the tires every once in a while, especially again accelerating on corner exit here. And, um, <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's very willing and very eager and. You know, it feels really good, but curb weight for these, because of that weight gain for the hybrid uh, system now, is 3,225 pounds. Still very light, especially these days, so nothing to complain about at all, honestly. But, you know, you can still get, you know, the regular uh, Civics under 3,000 pounds there. Um, but, you know, it still is the same great handling, the same great, you know, tuning for uh, the ride quality and just all the driver inputs once again. So it feels really good, does exactly what you want it to do, and doesn't feel like it's being held back by the extra weight or uh, anything like that and just really loves to power itself <laughs> out of corners and it's sport mode here I mean it is it's plenty of punch it's really fun and so you know I know not everyone's an enthusiast so I won't harp on this too long but if you are someone who you know always wanted an automatic Civic Si this is that automatic Civic Si in some ways yes you don't have a sportier suspension like the Si you don't have the sportier tires you don't have a limited slip diff and obviously you don't have the manual either unfortunately it'd be great to have all those things here in this as well for some Si hybrid that would be awesome to see uh, you know we're not gonna have that I don't think but um, you know it's just great that you have at least the power component is now satisfied for those who do want to punch your Civic with that automatic if you're stuck in traffic all the time or you just want better fuel economy um, and it's really great that you kind of have the best of both worlds and the great thing with you know civics is they have a really robust aftermarket support uh, you know you have a ton of parts available for these I'm sure obviously wheels tires uh, suspension all that stuff is very easy to improve yourself even swap in some SI stuff yourself probably if you'd like and kind of build an SI pretty easily again aside from losing that limited slip diff um, but you know with the power covered here you know you're gonna have a punchier Civic Si with an automatic uh, and it's just really cool as far as you know that component goes but now we're on this road that you know does generate some road noise typically but you really don't hear much of it I mean I'm actually pretty impressed I mean the Civic's always been one of the top uh, refinement uh, vehicles in the compact class here right up there with the Mazda 3 but I think I can certainly notice Compared to my memory of the regular Civic Sport Touring, I, I gotta say this does seem like it is ever so slightly quieter and it just stood out to me like, wow, like this is actually a little more polished than I was expecting. So a nice surprise there. And for the hybrids here, it's also worth noting that those tires are unique here to the hybrid version. The suspension tune is also unique for this vehicle in particular, of course, to account for the extra weight and just the slightly different uh, you know, characteristics you have here for the hybrid. So you do get a unique tune, but thankfully it is still nice and soft and comfortable, exactly what you want from just a nice hybrid Civic. Merging onto the highway here. It does simulate 
simulate those shifts, even though there isn't any actual shifting that needs to happen. It does, you know, do very normal shifting and honestly feels kind of like a Civic Si, you know, at least as far as the sound goes. Smoothness wise, obviously, it's gonna be way smoother than any manual. But um, it's really actually enjoyable to accelerate in. It's not like the average hybrid or uh, any average CVT where you have it just sitting at redline. This feels good to accelerate in, and it's not boring at all, in my opinion, at least. And so, yeah, just really a plentiful amount of power. And that is one huge advantage over all of its competitors, especially that torque figure is unmatched and uh, feels really nice. And out on the highway here in the Civic, this is the only place where you actually do have the gas engine directly powering the front wheels because otherwise the gas engine is always just acting like a power source for that electric motor that's powering those front wheels. But whenever you're up at highway speeds, then it cuts out the electric thing and then just goes straight to the wheels there for your um, you know, cruising on the highway because I guess that's more efficient. And um, so out here on the highway though, it's a really nice highway cruiser. Again, thanks to that extra refinement you get here. And I do have the adaptive cruise control on as well, which comes standard on all Civics, by the way, which is great. And we have a gentle corner here we're coming up to, and uh, we'll just see how it handles this. They have improved the Honda safety suite here for 2025, uh, and we are driving into some direct sunlight, and okay, it is still ping-ponging a little bit here. I mean, the road lines are not very well defined because of the lighting situation here, as you can probably see. So. Now that was a little iffy there, the way it was kind of zooming around the lane there, but it did stay within the lanes, which is something that other competing systems sometimes still struggle to do, believe it or not. So, you know, it did a pretty good job there, <laughs> at least being safe, but uh, maybe not the best driving there for a split second, but, you know, now just cruising out with, the, I think, a less challenging situation here on a straight part of highway. It's really nice and easy. And I also really like how it visualizes on the gauge cluster here, um, the vehicles in front of you, what they're doing. Like it actually identifies that I have a box truck in front of me here and I can see that here on the cluster, which is really cool. And it even sees, uh, like it's showing me the lanes that it's sensing and how the other cars are getting closer to the lanes or further away from the lanes. But now, you know, we're going around this gentle corner here and again, hovering my hands on the wheel, letting it do the steering for me here for the most part. And it's handling this corner just fine. So obviously the lines are a little easier to read here and handle that one really well. So, I mean, still not faultless, but really, really a good system. The Honda Lane Keep Assist system has always been one of the best in my opinion. Really well done. Usually gives me a lot of confidence um, in it and is one that's a reliable um, assistance. Um, and again, something I can't say about all the other systems out there. So I do really like that. I love that all this stuff is standard. The only thing though that's strangely they still make you pay extra for is blind spot monitoring. You have to go up to uh, the Sport and higher trims. The base LX does not get blind spot monitoring. But outside of that, everything else is standard. And again, even just going up one trip from the base gives you that blind spot monitoring there. So really great that you have all that stuff to help you out in addition to, like I said, this higher trim having uh, the parking sensors too. Another nice safety touch here is that you now have reinforced B and C pillar areas um, to have better crash uh, protection, especially you know side impact crash protection with that now being a little bit of a tougher test here for the 2025 model year, I believe. And so it's great that they've improved that. Honda is always so great about focusing on not only the safety tech, but also the actual safety stuff whenever a crash does happen. You know, they've pioneered these new advanced airbags that you have here in the Civic to minimize head motions during impact. And again, the reinforcements to the side is a great thing that, you know, no one really asked for. Civic already did very well in crash tests, but you know, just another thing to keep it on top and, you know, have that very impressive uh, rating. And it's just, I just always love Honda's commitment uh, to safety. And just, again, also focusing on that crash protection as well. And I'm gonna go back into the normal mode here and uh, calm down the powertrain a little bit. Although it's not frantic in uh, sport mode, you know, it's still totally could be totally drivable in sport mode. And if you wanna mix and match the feels of the different modes, you also have an individual mode here only in this top trim. Fuel economy for the Civic Hybrid is certainly one of the best things about the Civic Hybrid, obviously. That's why you're going for the Hybrid is that efficiency, really. And so it didn't disappoint. So these are rated 50 MPG in the city, 47 on the highway, and 49 combined. Um, and my driving was primarily around town city driving, just a tiny bit of highway mixed in there. So I was expecting to get you know pretty close to that 50. And right now I'm averaging 49 MPG, and that was with 
you know, the idling to film this interior a little bit and, um, you know, doing that acceleration and stuff, which certainly is not hypermiling in any way. But, you know, the other rest of the week that I've been driving, I have been kind of taking it easy and trying to hypermile a little bit, but still driving my normal way. You know, I'm not, um, you know, driving super slow, but just, you know, wanted to take it a little easier on the accelerations just to see what I could get. And before I started filming this review, my average was actually over 51 MPG. You can see it on the gauge cluster there when I was filming the interior. And so 51 is impressive. Again, at that point, I'm beating the best rating of the city rating there. And uh, I have no doubt that if I wasn't hammering on this, I could easily have maintained that here. But, um, you know, it's just a really efficient thing no matter how you slice it. And the fact that you get this kind of efficiency and still get this much power is really impressive. And this leads me into the last uh, segment here is talking about the pricing and how it compares to those competitors, especially as far as fuel economy goes. It's kind of interesting. So the Civic Hybrid starts at $29,845, including destination. And um, at that price point, you know, it certainly is a little more expensive to start than a comparable Corolla Hybrid. The difference though is that this gives you a lot more power than that Corolla does. And, uh, but this one for what it's worth, as tested is $33,300. And that Sport Touring Hybrid, once again, gives you the bigger screen, gives you the leather, gives you the Bose, uh, which is a 12 speaker stereo. And by the way, it's fantastic sounding. Um, but you know, you get that, you get the park sensors and a few other nice little additions as well. Um, but you know, not a necessity by any means. So I think that honestly, even though yes, you know, 30 grand for the starting price for the hybrid sounds a little high. Uh, again, you're getting so much power and the fact that, you know, with the sport hybrid, the hybrid edition gives you some things that regular sports don't always come with. Like you get the sunroof, you get the heated seats, uh, wireless phone charger, I believe, and one or two other things. And so uh, that's a nice improvement, even though basically the premium does come out to about $2,500 extra going from a regular sport version of the Civic to the sport hybrid. Uh, but again, I think for the extra power and for the fact you get all this extra equipment, I think the upcharge is pretty reasonable. And so as far as the pricing and just the positioning of the Civic Hybrid in general, it kind of splits the difference between the Corolla and the Prius, which really it's only two competitors uh, as far as hybrid compact you know, vehicles goes. And so with that Corolla, like I said, much cheaper, it comes in under $25,000 to start, but it's a lot less equipment, of course, than what is a pre already a pretty highly equipped vehicle, even with that Sport Hybrid of the Civic here. But you know, it's just, if you want a bare bones hybrid vehicle, it gets really good fuel economy. You know, there's that. That also does do slightly better fuel economy. You get about 53 MPG in that Corolla, uh, but you're going to have, you know, smaller wheels and just not as many niceties, and you can have a lot less power, 138 horsepower to be exact. Now, it does have an e-motor, which makes it feel a little punchier than an average gas-powered vehicle. It's simply just relying on the engine for that power. It does feel faster than 138 horsepower for sure, but... You know, it's just down on power, especially on paper. And it certainly isn't as fast as this, um, no matter how you cut it. But, it, it, you know, it's not quite as slow as it might sound. So I'd take one of those for a test drive just to see if you can live without the extra power of this. Because if you can, you can actually get a fully loaded version of the Corolla, the XLE Hybrid. Those are $29,000 all in, everything included. And that basically matches this on equipment. Um, you know, slight little differences. But basically, you know, you still get the upgraded stereo in that, the leather in that, um, you know, all those types of things. And so um, just one thing to note there is if you don't need the most power, Corolla is still the better value um, and also gives you better fuel economy there. Now, the other new component though is the new Prius, which is sportier now, has a lot more power, 194 horsepower. So you're still down six horsepower compared to this. Um, and I also will say that especially if you're comparing hatch to hatch, you have more hatch space in the Civic here than you get in the Prius. Um, and the Prius in general just feels a tiny bit more cramped than the Civic here. So definitely want to sit in one of those and just see just because they have that really racy roof line now for the Prius. I I love it. It's a super cool vehicle. I loved it. I spent a week with uh, the Prius last summer. Absolutely love them. Um, but the thing with the Prius is they're a little pricier. So as far as starting price goes, they are very comparable. They're actually around 29,000. So it slightly undercuts this from a starting price standpoint. But again, you don't get as much equipment as you get in the uh, you know sport hybrid version of the Civic. So whenever we compare apples to apples and you're looking at, you know, like something comparable to this fully loaded $33,300 Civic Sport Touring, um, if you go for the comparable Prius, it's going to cost you about 
$1,000. So there's a premium there. And again, you have a little bit less horsepower and torque in that Prius compared to what you have here in this. Now, the Prius's big thing is the fact that it gives you some nice features you can't get here in this. Like you get cooled seats in that top Prius. So for an extra $3,000, you get cooled seats, you get a bigger 12.3 inch screen, you get a 360 degree uh, camera view is available as an option, although that's an extra thousand dollars for that. But you just have some nicer features there. You can have the option for heated rear seats, but even without options, you get as standard in that uh, limited version of the Prius. You have like a double pane, big fixed glass roof. Doesn't open up, unfortunately, but you have, you know, a bigger view out of the roof if that's something that you or your rear seat passengers would enjoy. So really it'll just come down to, do you want those higher end features? If you'd love to have cooled seats, if you'd love to have, you know, uh, the glass roof, the bigger screen, all those things. Um, you know, I'd say the Prius Limited certainly elevates itself beyond this, but again, you're paying three grand more basically for that. If that's worth three grand to you for those things, absolutely, I think the Prius is fantastic as well. Obviously still legendary reliability, just like Honda and a really cool look, just a little less practical, but still has the hatch there and, um, you know, still has some practicality for sure. Plus again, that Prius gets 52 MPG, so even slightly better than this. And that's 52 across the board, by the way, versus this going down into the high 40s here, you know, for highway driving and all that. But the Prius, it's 52, you know, no matter what. And so, um, yeah, I really like the Prius. So, I mean, I think all three have their own niches where, you know, it comes down to, again, what equipment you want, how much power you want. Each different vehicle between these three has their own appeal, and I don't blame anyone for getting any of them. They're all really good choices, honestly. Um, but I really like the niche that the Civic has carved out for itself. Perfectly positioned in between the Corolla and the Prius. And I think, you know, again, does some of the driver inputs a little bit better, I'd say, especially compared to the Corolla. Um, and just, yeah, I think the Civic Hybrid is a fantastic choice. It's like Honda has even said, it's perfectly timed. And I agree, you know, everyone loves hybrids these days. This is something that everyone wants. And I'm sure this is going to be a very hot seller for Honda. And that is the last thing to mention is, you know, compared to the competitors, it still seems like it's kind of hard to sometimes get your hands on those Corolla hybrids and those Priuses, especially. If Honda does a better job stocking the Civic Hybrid and keeping up with demand than Toyota does, then there might be some extra incentive to go for the Civic just for a little bit less headache compared to trying to hunt down, you know, one of those Toyotas. So anyway, you know, I'll come down to uh, your personal preferences and all the other variables that go into a buying decision. But overall, again, really love the Civic Hybrid. So anyway, that's all my thoughts on it though. Let me know your thoughts on the Civic Hybrid in the comments below. Huge thanks to Honda for providing me here with this vehicle to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe to keep these videos coming and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.